Children, grab your pillow, and parents, grab your lighter. Make yourself real cozy, because we're pulling in a lighter. It's a podcast about the fairy tales you've heard many, many times. This time will be different, because we're stoned out of our minds. So spark up a bowl, and tuck yourselves in. Once Upon a Dime is about to begin. So the story we are going to talk about is the story of the white snake. And it goes like this. There was a king and he was very proud. He was very prideful and he seemed to know everything. He considered himself a knowledgeable person. Um, And he had a weird quirk. His weird quirk was actually um, that he would have second dinners. Every night. <laughs> yeah, every night he would have a servant, a trusted servant, bring him a covered dish. Mm-hmm. But he would never open the dish with anyone else in the room. So no one knew what was in this covered dish, not even the trusted servant. <laughs> so uh, one servant... After a long time, one servant actually was was curious, like his curiosity got the best of him. And he took the dish to his room, his own room at some point, and he opens the dish. He, opens, he uncovers it. And what does he find? A white snake. But it's a dead white snake. He has a second. He has second dinners, and it's this white snake, and it looks so delicious that the servant he just had to absolutely try this snake because it just looks so good. So he took a bite, and almost instantaneously, he was he heard voices. That that weren't there before. Beautiful voices. Beautiful voices, and he and he went and he followed the sound of of those voices, and it was some sparrows outside of his window, and they were chirping away, talking actual words that he could understand. Yeah. So like he eats the snake or whatever, and let's just say he gives it back to the king. But also on this day, the queen lost her ring. Then the servant actually fell under suspicion. Maybe it was because he fed the king a chewed on snake. And the king was like, you know, this doing something weird. I see him doing something weird. The white snake only worked if you have royal blood. So he thought that it only worked on him, but he didn't really know. And the servant is now under suspicion because he didn't do as he was told he's no longer a trusted servant tries to tell like say no i'm innocent i didn't um i didn't steal the ring i'm innocent but they didn't believe him so at that point he didn't know what he was gonna do and they say they say that he's gonna go to prison the king was like you're gonna go to prison uh, unless you get, bring back that ring he was like, I don't know what else I'm going to do. Uh, I, I don't know how to prove my innocence. Uh, and then he overhears some ducks talking uh, outside. So I guess he's like walking out. He's like kicking rocks, trying to figure out what he's going to do to get out of this pickle, this little pickle that he's in. And uh, he stumbles on some ducks talking. He doesn't stumble on them. He just like cures them because then the ducks would be like, wah, wah. The ducks are just talking about their day, and one of the ducks is like, uh, I, I got something heavy. I'm carrying some weight here, and it's in my belly. Uh, and it's it's the queen's ring. Accidentally ate it. Either accidentally ate it, or I mistook it for some edible shiny gold thing. Which is accidental. I either accidentally did it, or I did it because the queen is a and I know it. And, uh... The servant snatches it up by the neck, just quack, and it's like the duck's like quack, quack. so. The duck is uh, strangled for a moment, and the servant takes it to the cook. He says, "Look at this duck; it's fat. You should cook it. It's really good. It stuffed itself. You don't have to do any stuffing." And the cook's like, "Okay." Cook's like, "All right, this duck has lived its life. It's over. And I mean, it it stuffed itself plenty. It's perfect for the evening." The evening meal. And so she says, okay, and cuts the bird up, and the ring comes out, and they give it to the king, and the king's like, okay, I believe you. Now that 
you proved to me and you got my ring back. What do you want? You have anything you want, anything you desire. You can even, I'll, I'm going to, I can promote you from trusted servant to a higher uh, trusted servant um, in a tower that overlooks the like he was living in like the servant's den or something like that and he was like I'll give you a upper deck non-smoking king size you, we got wi-fi up there he's like no I don't I don't that's not really what I want I don't want to be your servant anymore I want to travel the world and I would like a horse and some money he promised it so he, he you know he, he did what he said he was gonna do and the guy's now uh, a traveler, a world traveler. So he's traveling and he's going about and he comes up upon this pond and he see, and he hears these this screaming, screaming, screaming. And then he sees that these fish are stuck in like this seaweed vine or something. They're tangled and, tangled. and they're gasping for air. They can't breathe because they're in air and not water. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> oh, so I see them all tangled up, these fish. Um stuck in the vines and they're gasping for air so he gets off his horse and he goes over and he frees them of these vines and lets them go in the water and they're like oh my gosh uh we will remember you and reward you for delivering us and uh he's like cool thank you appreciate that so then he gets back on his horse and he just keeps keeps traveling and then he's traveling 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 and he sees this like anthill with this king ant and king ant's mad he's all red he's a fire ant <laughs> he's the only fire ant in the bunch because he's the one that's mad I mean, he's just like these humans they don't watch where they walk and they keep this guy has walked by with his horse and his horse stomped and killed like his whole family or something like a bunch of ants like a hundred ants um and then he's like dude there's one right here, stupid horse. And then the servant heard this ant, like, get mad and, like, really mad. So he goes around the ant hill, walking around the ant hill. And then the ant, like, see that he does this. And the ant's like, thank you. Uh, you're such a good human. I will pay you back for this. I'll reward you for your kindness of sparing my people. So that now he's got an ant you know on his side and uh then he keeps on going keeps on trotting along ends up in the woods and the horse is walking and there's this tree where these birds are the ravens are uh throwing babies off the (laughs) off the branches saying fly you're too old we're done with you you uh you can fend for yourselves now. Basically, he's walking along and he sees little black blobs drop from the, the branches and and hit the floor and hears them crying out. And, and they're like, uh, we can't, we're just babies. We can't fend for ourselves. We will surely starve to death. So dude hops off his horse and cuts its throat. Uh, so now he bleeds out this horse and leaves the carcass for these birds so uh he goes now he's just on foot and he's got a long way to go and he's going through these dunes and there and he passes the cave of wonders (laughs) and he and he ends up in uh, a town a really big town and the bustling hustling bustling city of sorts uh new york if you will. And, he, and there's a guy on horseback and he's announcing a proclamation that the uh, king's daughter is looking for a husband. And uh, there's a test in order to see if you qualify. You have to do a life-threatening task. If you fail, then you die. The only w- one person will win and a lot of people will die unless you're like the first one to do it and you succeed. It's like, well, I wanted somebody to die. He saw the princess and then he signed up to try to marry her and do this test with, and like her beauty mesmerized him so much that he forgot that all these people had died before. Yeah. And so he didn't care. So the first test, so, so we'll, we'll go ahead and break this thing up into three rounds. First, first challenge round one. Yeah. He goes to, uh, they take him out to sea. And they throw a gold ring into the, into the sea and they say, you have to find this ring. Um, and and if you find it, then you can marry her. But if you don't find it, then we're going to keep throwing you out there until you die. So, uh, he goes into the sea 
after the the ring and uh, so the whole village is uh is standing on shore as he's going into the water and they're pitting it, pitying him they're like what what's he going to do how is he going to accomplish this so they leave cuz they don't want to watch him die that's basically what happens he goes into the sea and he's kind of like looking around he doesn't feel like he's going to find it um and he's pretty he feels hopeless and then the three fish that he saved come by so uh they bring a muscle and drop it at his feet and they say thank you uh you were the fish that you saved yeah we're the three fish that you saved and we told you we would reward you here it is and he grabs the muscle and he opens it takes out he's like it's a ring and pulls the a ring out he's like, and there was a ring Mm-hmm. And and he held it up like like Link in the Triforce and goes. Da, 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 da. He brings it to the king and the king is like, "All right, you proved yourself." But then the princess was a bratty little, and the princess saw that he was like lower than her. That she, he wasn't her standard. He was a he was a servant at yeah. some level, and she she just saw it in him. I guess she despised it, and she. Was like, nope, he has to do another task. I don't accept this. She's like, no, not gonna, not gonna take this little runt, um, unless he does, you know, another task. (laughs) And she has the perfect task in mind. She goes out to the garden and she, she hauls 10 bags of millet seed. So millet is bird seed. And then she, she just, she dumped all of the millet seed, 10 bags of millet seed in, on the garden. And this bird seed is pretty tiny, itty bitty. So she says, you need to pick up all of this millet seed. You have to pick up every oh. single seed by the, by morning. So pick up 10 bags of millet seed. Uh, don't leave a single uh, seed ungotten, ungrabbed and uh, do it all by morning or else you die. He's in the garden and the, I mean, he's, he's like, there's way too many seeds here and it's getting dark. Uh, I'm probably going to just die. There's no hope. How am I going to do this? He falls asleep crying. He wakes up and the wow, that was good. 10 seed, t- 10 bags of millet seed completely filled up. And he's like, Oh my God, I did it. <laughs> How did I do it? And the ant's like, crawls up on him. Ant King crawls on his shoulder and he's like, hey, buddy, don't be so hasty. We did it for you. We said we said we would reward you. So this is this is me and my crew, my 10 million brothers and sisters, very ancestral family um, that we, we took care of the, those those bags for you. And he's like, wow, this is amazing. I win. And the girl and the princess comes in and she's like, well, uh, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. Um, pretty impressive, but no, I will never marry you. I, I, you, your only chance would be if you could go get me the apple from the tree of life from the garden of Eden. That's the only way I will ever marry your stupid. And he's like, he's, he's now he's just wandering the world trying to find the Garden of Eden. He goes to like three kingdoms and it comes up empty handed. And then he's just walking around. Yeah, he gets to the woods uh, and he lies and sits down under a tree and and falls asleep again and then there's some rustling in the trees and he looks up and and he sees the ravens that he saved and they drop an apple a golden apple in his lap in his hand and he's like oh my god i did it (laughs) he's taking credit for everything and the ravens said we are the three young ravens you delivered from starving when we grew big and her and heard that you were sick in the golden apple 
We flew over the sea to the end of the earth where the tree of life stands and we fetched the apple. That's what the raven said. And so he has this apple and he takes it back to the princess. And she has no more excuses. No more. Like, that was it. She was like, dude, I would, I wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole. And then she, he gave her an 11 foot pole. I was like, well, I guess I'll, I'll touch you with that. So they get married and they both, they share the apple. And then all her hatred for him just vanishes and all she feels is love towards him. And they lived to a great age. Happily. Happily. And undisturbed. The end. Close the chapter on this episode until we meet again. And so the story goes, we turn the page to find the end.